ஒர்க்ஸ் <laughs> uh so kitna can we start or like can we give a, a wait for a minute or two or... um yeah if people are okay we can wait for 2 uh, 3 minutes as well or else we can uh, get started okay i don't see any reaction maybe we can wait for a couple of minutes also sure sure yes okay so my screen is visible right uh yes okay so yeah so today uh, we are going to uh, see uh, the overview of these concepts uh, basically like uh, we'll start from with a basic concepts in the locus and uh, gradually we move on to advanced concepts so this is going to be our agenda today Uh, i think uh, we have already shared what are all the prerequisites like what are the things we need to install uh, uh, in our system uh, to uh, work on uh, today's session uh, if anyone has not set the environment ready maybe uh, i'll copy paste this uh, in gchat uh, you can uh, download this while we are working on uh, or while we are go going through these slides so come back so uh like if suppose if uh, like uh, anyone has already installed uh, uh, the locus library and all the necessary things in your system maybe you can uh, uh, create a project and add uh, this sample script in your system and see uh, and ensures like uh, uh, no issues in the environment setup and all so just that you need to create a, a, a class sorry you create a project and uh, within that create a uh, python file and add this script or maybe i'll give a, a detailed description in the next slides so for now just add this and try executing uh, uh, in the command line locust hyphen f file name dot py uh, don't include this double quotes and all so just add this script and uh, uh, try executing this uh, to ensure uh, everything is uh, working fine in your system uh, maybe after that you can uh, give a virtual thumbs up uh, we'll take uh, max uh, for 5 minutes of time because we need to spend more time in the upcoming slides uh, kirtna can you uh, help on this like if uh, anyone can use a thumbs up please let me know i'll proceed with the next slides sure sure Uh, so folks please give a thumbs up if uh, this is already done i saw one thumbs up okay we have two people done and uh, folks please feel free to use the chat options if you have any queries or raise your hand if you have any doubts and when you are done with this one or need any help please 
let us know through any reactions or chat, anything. So can we move her? Folks, can we move on or do you need more time on this? Please give a thumbs up if we are done and we can move on. Uh, we're supposed to get the uh, output as my task one, right? Yes. For me, the terminal is just stating starting locust 2.15.1. Hasn't moved further that. We can continue. Maybe I'll I'll let you know if I face sure. it. Sure, sure. So uh, like uh, if you are not able to see my screen or my uh, 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 voice is not uh, clear, but I'm too, going too fast or too slow, please call out immediately. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, post that in the chat. Uh, we have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, we'll take it to all the questions to the parking lot and we'll discuss during that time. So I'll just uh, give a, a, a intro about uh, this Locust tool. So uh, Locust is actually basically an open source uh, load testing tool. And it, again, it is a Python based tool. Uh, we use uh, simple Python scripts. Uh, we don't use any complex algorithms and all to add those scripts. In. And uh, the overhead of each locust user, right? Each virtual uh, locust user, like it's very less. So uh, the resource utilization will be less even when there are more number of virtual users are generated. And uh, Locust also supports a uh, distributed uh, uh, framework. So it uh, distributes the load uh, between different systems and uh, it collects the data, like the statistics from each uh, single system and execute uh, sorry, and generate a, a single report. So, so that's how uh, it supports a, a distributed framework also. And other than uh, uh, HTTP and HTTPS, uh, Locust also supports uh, RPC and gRPC uh, protocol. And Locust provides a uh, web-based uh, user interface. So uh, using this uh, interface, like we can change the load, uh, view the data, view the graph, and uh, uh, download the statistics uh, as well. So th these are like a high level intro about the Locust. So uh, let's start with the basic concepts actually. So uh, uh, understanding these basic terminologies will help us to create a, a framework development. So parallelly, I'll create a, a project in my system as well. So uh, my uh, PyCharm editor is also visible, right? Yes. Okay. So I had already created a project. Now within that project, I'll create a, a Python file. I'll name this just demo on that file. So now I'm going to uh, create a class. I name it as a my user class. This my user class is going to inherit uh, the user library, user class. This is a built-in class which is available in Locust library. I'm importing from this Locust library. So what this user class does? This user class actually uh, uh, informs the Locust to generate the virtual users. So this user class helps uh, uh, locus to generate a uh, virtual number of users. So um, maybe the virtual users, when we say like uh, the specified users, uh, we are uh, mentioning in the command line or uh, during the execution, that number of virtual users are generated by this user class. Okay. So once the user is generated, so what kind of activities it's going to perform? That is called as task in locus. 
may be for example i'll add a method task 1 for now i am not going to hit any endpoint i'll go with the basics after that i'll let uh, tell you like how to hit the endpoints and all so i'll uh, print my task my task 1 so uh, to um, for once the user is hatched right so it uh, to consider the to consider this uh, method as a task we have to add a, a decorator called task this is also i am inheriting from uh, locus library so adding this task decorator helps the user to know this is the task it needs to perform and i'll add an another task as well Okay, so uh, now um, the user is hatched and the user knows what are the tasks needs to perform. Okay, right. So, uh, for example, now uh, we are logging into any website, right? So, once we log in, we don't go immediately uh, search the product, uh, add the products to the cart and book the order. Everything we won't do immediately as we log in into the website. We will take some think time, right? We will take some time to uh, what what's the next activity we are going to perform. For example, I log into website. Okay, next we'll think about like what is the activity we are going to perform. Like okay, I will go and see the orders. I will go and search the product. So that think time is called as a wait time in Locust. So uh, this uh, wait time uh, uh, makes the user to wait. Uh, to perform uh, uh, to pick the another task for example once the user hatch it uh, picks a, a task one and it completes the task right so after that it will wait for a particular time the time we can specify so after that only it will pick the next task so if we are not uh, specifying uh, any wait time it will be considered as a entirely kind of a stress test if there is no think time or wait time so uh, there are three ways we can mention the wait time. The first one is between one comma two. This one comma two of uh, the numbers we are mentioning here is in uh, seconds actually. So um, if the user if uh, the user is hatched and it performs the task one means after this uh, execution of the task one it will wait for uh, a second wait for the time between one to two seconds. Uh, before uh, picking the next task. There is an another way where uh, we can specify the wait time that is called as a constant. So if we mention it is a constant, So it's it's just going to say take a single parameter. It is again it is in the seconds format. So uh, the user will wait for one second before picking a another task. There is an another method called constant throughput. If we maintain uh, sorry if we specify it's a uh, uh, five seconds. So for example, if the user uh, takes two seconds to finish the execution of the first task, then it will wait for another three seconds to pick the next task. If suppose if uh, it takes uh, one second to perform the first task and it will wait for another four seconds uh, to pick the, uh, to be, uh, before picking the next task. So uh, this constant throughput is like an adaptive time uh, for the user uh, to uh, uh, to make the user wait. So for now, I'll specify it as a between one comma two. So let me execute this file. Locust, we have to accept file name hyphen f and we have to give the file name demo1.py. And we have to specify number of users hyphen u that is with the hyphen u and next one is spawn ring. So if suppose if we are going to generate uh, five users, so in that case, and we are specifying at uh, the spawn rate one. So it means first in first second, 
uh, first user gets generated and after a second, second user gets generated till uh, the user will uh, uh, gets generated every second till it reaches the maximum number of users we specify in the command line. Now I will give enter. So by default, locust executes in the port 8089. If I click on it, we will see this uh, web user interface and uh, we'll see the number of users we have given in the command line and the spawn rate also we are seeing it here. And for now, we are not going to use any uh, endpoint. So uh, we leave that as a empty and I click on start swimming. So uh, as we are not hitting any endpoints, we don't see the statistics here instead. In the terminal, if we go, if we see that we have seen that print statements here. So uh, by default, I'll stop it and explain. So uh, by uh, after the execution, so once we initiate this execution, right? So locust user picks the task two as a first one. So uh, it, it doesn't mean like a locust executes in the order. We can make uh, the user to execute in the order we have specified in the script. But for now, uh, locust user picks the task in any random order. So first it has picked the task two. And after that, it waits for a second between one and two and picks the next task. So the next task may be again the task two or task one. So here in this uh, scenario, it again picked task two and wait for one or two seconds. And after that, it again picked the task two. So after a one or two second, it uh, picked the first task. So here it keeps on executing till the execution is stopped. So okay. Now uh, I'll uh, explain another concept called wait. So uh, that if you are uh, navigating into a, a website, if you're logging into the website, the login activity will be done once, but search the product activity will happen many times and uh, a book order will happen once or twice, add to cart may uh, uh, happen less than searching the product, right? So it's need not necessarily, uh, all the activities uh, will be given equal weightage. So uh, Locus provides a, a capability called, uh, uh, we can add weight uh, to a particular task. So uh, the uh, task with more weight will be executed more than uh, the task with a lesser weight. For example, if I want uh, this task to needs to be executed more times, so I can give this, uh, I am giving a weight as a five for this particular task and I'll give task uh, uh, weight as a one for this particular task one. So in that case, uh, pr the priority goes to the task two and the pri less priority will be given to task one. So I'll again execute this. I'll click on start swimming. So if you see uh, the more task two needs to be task two needs to be picked more by the user than task one. We can see the same in the print statements, right? Okay, I'll go back to the slide and see what's the device. So so like uh, so far we have seen about the user task between and wait. Now we'll move on to the next concept called task set and sequential task set. So I'll create an another file. I'll name it as demo.py. So in the previous example, we have seen that like uh, uh, both the users and tasks class uh, tasks are in the same class, but uh, while uh, we are developing the framework, uh, it won't be the same, right? Like uh, we will uh, have that as a separate class, as users will be a separate class, as task will be in the separate class, data will be in the separate class, right? Similarly, now I am going to create a class uh, for task set separately. So I'll name it as my task. And this task uh, class is going to inherit uh, uh, the class that is called as a task set class. This task set class is from locus library and within this class i'm going to add the tasks
same i'm going to here add one more first okay so now i'm going to create a one more class that is for users this is going to inherit uh, the user class which helps locus to generate the users virtual users so i'll add wait time for the virtual users to perform uh, to wait uh, before picking another task so i'll add the time wait time as between 1 to 2 seconds so now okay we have added a separate class for task separate class for users but there is no linkage between these class right where you my users class and my tasks class so to create a linkage we, there is another keyword called tasks so we we can provide the class name of the task which the user needs to execute so if we provide the class name here once the user is generated it will look for the class uh, task which needs to execute so uh, it uh, my task is already inherited the task set class so if we mention those class name here, it, the users automatically start executing these tasks. I'll show the demo. Just I'm changing the file name. If you see my task one is printed, mostly it has picked up my task one first. Yeah, my task two also got picked by the user. Okay, so um, in this example also, uh, the user, uh, the uh, virtual user, uh, pick randomly pick the tasks. So if suppose if we want the user to uh, pick the task in the sequential order, there is an another class in the uh, locus library that is called a sequential task set. So if we importing, uh, so if we inheriting the sequential task set, the locust user will pick the task in the order we specify. So if you see like a task one is uh, printed first, task two, task one, task two, it goes in the sequence. Okay, if suppose like um, these two tasks are related to each other, so we grouped it under a single class. If there are some other tasks also be there, like uh, it's not just going to be one or two tasks that lots of uh, activities we have to uh, uh, perform, right? And user needs to perform. So if uh, we want other uh, set of tasks which are related to each other, if we want those uh, class uh, those tasks grouped under another class maybe we can create an another uh, task set class we'll import the same in uh, from the sequential task set uh, cl built-in class from which is from uh, locus library i'll add uh, two tasks under this class i'll name it as task 3 I'll add one more class, it's task two. Okay. So, uh, but uh, we haven't added the new tasks class name, right? So we have to add this in the task list. So then only user, uh, virtual generated virtual user will uh, perform the task within my task one class also. So I'll execute this now. If you see, uh, it picks the first set of tasks that is printing one and two, but it has not picked the three and four yet. So it actually doesn't pick the uh, task three and four. The reason is, 
So once the user is hatched, uh, it uh, randomly pick any one of the task set class here and it keeps on executing. It will go first task, second task, it keeps on executing, but uh, the control doesn't come back here to pick the another set of the class. So uh, to, ma to make the user to pick another set of classes also, we there is an a method called interrupt. So I'll, I'll add that as here. I'm adding task decorator for this task. So add the same in another class as well. Okay, what it happens is like, now if uh, once the user is generated, so it will randomly pick any one of the task set class here and it starts executing the task within this class. So it executes task one, task two. Now next task is like an interrupt. So the execution stops here and the control comes out of this first class and comes back to uh, this tasks list and it picks the another task set and executes this task uh, within the another set of tasks. So, uh, uh, our locust user makes uh, like ensure like uh, at least once all the task set class are executed once. So, if you see like uh, now all the user, uh, all the tasks will be executed at least once. So, three, four, this task one is picked by the uh, user and three, four executed, it stops the execution and come back here. It picks the another task set class. So it goes to my task. It picks the first task for second and again interrupted from here and control come back and picks the another set of tasks. So uh, all the task set class in the list will be executed at least once. So I'll go back, I'll close all this. So uh, like on, we are covered all these uh, basic concepts like we understand we have some a uh, basic understanding on the keywords like user task between wait task set sequence tail task set and interrupt so let's move on to the events so i think uh, most of us are have already worked on uh, test ng error so test ng has a listeners concept right so uh, if there is an, any event generated we can listen to that event and we can perform certain type of activities for example, uh, if you want to connect to a DB before all the activities are getting started, right? So those activities will go to before all. Uh, so uh, we can add listener uh, before uh, all the activities are started. So that by listening to that event, we can perform such activities. So we'll, I'll show an example. I'll create an another file. I'll name it as demo 3.5. I'll copy the contents from the here. Let me have, make it simple. I'll have only one task set. So, okay. Now, if we want to perform a certain activities before all the tasks are picked. So for that, I'll create a method called uh, before all and I will listen to the events. Again, importing these events from the uh, locust events uh, dot test before all this test gets started, I'll adding the listener. So when the event is generated, there will be n number of arguments are also generated. When, when we are capturing, uh, though, when we are listening to the event, we have to capture those arguments as well. But we are not sure like how many arguments are also generated uh, during uh, the when the event is created, right? So uh, in Python, uh, there is a, a keyword called key odds. 
if we are not sure about uh, how many arguments are there, we can mention as a key arguments. I'll add a statement like before all. So similarly, I will add another event for after uh, to capture the after all to so, um, so once all the tasks are uh, finished, when uh, the execution is stopped, so if we want to uh, disconnect the DB kind of things, uh, we can uh, add listener to the task, uh, sorry, test stop event, and we can perform such activities. So if we execute this, I'll change the file name. If you see, before all is executed first and after that tasks are executing. And I, if we interrupt the execution, after all uh, is printed. So if we want uh, any uh, activities needs to be performed after all the uh, task execution, we can uh, use this listener concepts. Similarly, there are two more listeners in Locus that is for on, on start. So once the locust user is generated, every time the locust user is generated, if we want to perform any activity, we can use this on start listener. So uh, it's not like, it's a not uh, like a before all, it's like a, a before all executes only once, but uh, this on start executes every time while the user is getting hatched. Similarly, there is a one more method called if one on stop. Yes. From after user. So before all executed first and after that, uh, maybe I'll uh, execute with two users. So we can see that this before user is executed twice and after user is executed twice. So before all executed once, after that the first user got generated. That's why uh, before user printed and after that, uh, uh, the first user uh, performed the first task and after that another user also uh, gets generated because we have given the spawn rate as a one so after a second second user also gets generated so uh, before user sec uh, for the second user also gets printed and first both the users performing both the tasks so when we are interrupting the execution after user also printed twice and after all, executing one printed one, so it's like after all the activities are performed. I'll go back to the slides. So now uh, we will see how we can handle the API requests. I'll create an another file. Demo four uh, dot pi. Now I am creating a class, my user class. This time, uh, like in the previous examples, we have inherited the uh, from user class, right? So this time we are going to inherit from HTTP user class. This HTTP user class is also. Uh, let me import this from. So this HTTP user class also inherited from the user class. It has all the capabilities as the user class have. But in addition to that, HTTP user class has an attribute called client attribute. This client attribute uh, helps the user to hit the request to send a uh, get our post request. So I'll add the wait time.
So now I'll have the uh, look, um, task class where we can hit the endpoint. So I'll inheriting the task set class. Now um, I'll create a task name task one. I'll add the task decorator as well. So this name Lucas task. Now we are going to hit the endpoint. Uh, in this example, I am going to use this uh, RESTful Booker API, booking API. Uh, I'll go to get uh, the uh, booking order detail of a particular ID, I will use the booking endpoint and uh, I'll use the booking ID is 662. Now I'm going to capture this response and we'll print the response dot status code. I'm going to try like this. Um, so now, I'll execute this locus hyphen f demo 4.py. I'm going to generate just only one user for now. Hyphen r, it's going to uh, uh, generate the user at a spawn rate of one. Now, so far, like in the previous examples, we haven't used any host, right? So uh, now I am going to use this endpoint. I'll just change the booking order. It's 3149. So this is the endpoint we are going to hit uh, using the locus. And we are going to uh, hit the booking order 319. And just we are going to fetch the details, uh, sorry, fetch the status code of this request. I'll hit it now. Uh, so uh, if as we have added this host in our command line, that is also gets reflected in the UI. I'll click on the start swimming. So uh, in previous examples, the, we don't see the statistics here, right? I'll see. Okay. 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 I missed to add the tasks class here, right? So tasks, we have to add the uh, task name. Is a task set class name. I'll re-execute. So in uh, the booking order is not there. I'll check a valid booking order now. Six five is that. I'll stop the execution. Booking order is sixty five. I'll run this, execute this. Okay, so like uh, in earlier examples, we don't see the statistics in the uh, here, right? Because uh, we haven't used any endpoints. Now we started using the endpoint, so we are able to see the uh, request statistics there, here. I'll stop it now. So if suppose, uh, if there is uh, any failure, like we have seen that, right? Like uh, that uh, 404, if the booking order is not found. If we want to capture the reason of the failure, there is an another keyword called catch uh, response. So to uh, catch the response, uh, we have to add it as a catch response equal to true. Then only we, uh, we get the uh, uh, details are like uh, reason of uh, failure and all. So we'll catch that response. Now I'll add it as if. Equal to 200. Dot success. Else. As dot failure. Of, we'll want to know the reason of the failure. We can uh, see those failure reasons in the failure tab actually. So that's the reason we are catching the response. I'll check now. Maybe I'll change the uh, booking order. I guess it won't be there. I'll re-execute.
yes it's not there we'll see the failure status we can get to know the reason of the failure Th this is uh, this catch response to is helping us to catch the uh, reasons of the failure and other uh, uh, like uh, if we want to make use of the uh, uh, response uh, in uh, subsequent requests also we have to use the catch response those uh, concepts we can uh, uh, see while uh, uh, developing the framework okay next i'll move, move back to the slide and i'll close all this So now we have seen the HTTP user class, right? Now we'll go to okay, execution modes. So where, what are the different uh, ways of uh, execution? I'll change the valid order ID and 63. So um, every time uh, we have given uh, the command line and after that uh, clicking on the uh, localhost 8089 port and uh, the UI will be there and after that we are clicking the start swimming button if suppose if we don't want to do like that if we want to uh, run that as a headless mode we can add the headless parameter here and uh, every time we are interrupting the execution right so if we don't want to interrupt the uh, execution, if we want automatically get stopped, we can mention it as a uh, hyphen T five seconds. So uh, UI won't appear if we execute in the headless mode and in a similar way, um, uh, execution automatically gets stopped after five seconds. So uh, all the statistics will be appear in the terminal itself and after five seconds, it automatically gets stopped. And uh, there is an another way if we want to see the UI, but uh, we don't want to click on the start spamming button. So if we provide, uh, if, we, uh, given, if we given the command line, it should automatically execute in the UI. So for that, we can uh, give the auto start keyword so uh, automatically it uh, ex starts executing and we can see that in the ui as well so if we go here like we, that we need not click on the start swimming button so it automatically comes here to directly to the statistics window And if we want these statistics to get exported to any of the CSV file, we can add this CSV and give the CSV file name. So after five seconds, it automatically gets stopped and we can see these statistics here in the CSV format. So, um, and I'll go back here. So, and uh, if suppose, uh, if you, there is an another task. Task two. And I'll add as the task decorator. And if we want to perform certain type of tasks, uh, we can add a tag for those. Add a tag. I'll name it as a testing. I'll input this tag as well. So I'll print toss two. So now we can execute this with the tags keyword in the command line with testing. So if we add testing uh, in the tag, we had already uh, added a tag with the name testing for this uh, task. So this task alone will be executed. This task will be ignored. So if you see task two is executed it, and it automatically gets stopped after five seconds as we have given the uh, time limit as a five second. So go back to the slide. 
so we have seen all these uh, different types of execution modes uh kirtana like uh, uh, can we take a short break or uh, can we continue with the... um i think yeah we can take a short break or uh, if people had any doubts or you know any troubles with running any of those things they could also clarify this time is will that be okay yeah yes yeah uh, if you have any doubts people or if something was not working please feel free to you know have a debug time now or we can also you know take kind of like a 10 minute break and be back for the rest of the session i will share my screen again so yes like uh, so far we have seen the uh, small small concepts right now we'll uh, start looking on the how we can proceed with the framework so for that let me create a few folders a ladder users class and i'll have a separate directory for data and i'll have separate for tasks and i'll have separate one for um, common libraries if you want to add any uh, library okay okay then now i'll we'll start with the user class within that let me create a new python file i'll name it as user a dot py i'll create a class general user this i'm going to inherit from http user class i'll import this from locus library i will add wait time to okay this is fine now similarly i'll create a task set class I'll name it as task set a so task set a dot py i'll add name it as a task set 1 again we are going to inherit from Toss it. Now, uh, here we'll go going to perform two tasks. We'll uh, maybe I'll add it as a sequential task set, so we can perform in the order we specify. Okay, first task we are going to create a booking in the same RESTful booking uh, Booker API uh, post booking order. We'll add the uh, task decorator keyword. Now, I for now I uh, add a, just a comment post request. Now we'll have an another method to get the booking order, uh, booking details of the uh, order just we created in the first task. That is in the post task. so get booking data or details cell will print the booking detail here so these are the two tasks we are going to perform so uh, for uh, to post the booking order we need data right so within this data i'll create a json file for booking details dot JSON. Ah, uh, maybe I'll copy paste the data JSON file. This. So I'll. Uh, I'm going to use these two uh, uh records, like a uh, two data, uh, to create a order. 
in the booking api restful booker api so and and every time uh, the user like uh, we have to pass the data uh, to the user right so for that i am going to create a one more uh, function let me be add data to create so um, this function is uh, we are going to pass the uh, data from the json file to the user so once the user is hatch it uh, the user is going to uh, perform the post uh, request so to post request uh, to perform these request they, they need the data so for that we are fetching the data from the json file and passing the data to the task class so for that now i'll uh, create a class called load data i'm not going to inherit from any uh, locust classes i'm just going to leave it such as um, now i am going to load the data from the uh, json file to a booking list so i'll for now i'll keep it as a empty we'll pause uh, i'm going to create another method called load data to list i don't want to create it as a instance method i'll add it as a class method so i'll add it as a static so okay i'll just close and open again Um, yeah, I'm getting the pop up now. Oh. Yes. Static method. So now I am going to read the JSON file with open, which is in the current directory. Okay, within the current directory, the JSON file is present within the uh, data folder within that booking details dot JSON. We will open that in read mode. So I will put it in a single quotes. And we'll, we have to uh, have a reference so i'll make it as a data reader so um we have to convert this into a json format right so i'll make this at a json dot load of data reader i'll save it in booking details so now we have all these uh, records which is available in booking details uh, we are going trying to add in the booking list. So uh, for every item in this booking details, we will add this in the booking list. Since it is a class variable, we'll have to mention the class name dot append and we'll add the item. So now we have all the items, all the records in the JSON file, which is it in the list. So we are done with the first step now. So when uh, every user uh, is hatched, we can pause the one record which is available in the booking list. For that, we'll create an another method. Uh, maybe we'll let uh, load data, send data to user. I don't want to create a instant method instead i'll add this as a static method now uh we'll return the first record sorry let's load data dot booking plus dot pop so uh whenever this method is executed right so it uh, returns the first list first record in the list okay right so okay now you suppose if there are three users uh, whenever the method is called, uh, the first uh, record in the list gets popped out. Uh, second also gets popped out. For the third, it, the list will be empty, right? So we want to make that as a circular. 
so if suppose the list is empty maybe we will we'll re uh, reload uh, the uh, data to the list again so uh, if there are more number of users uh, the data will be reused again this less than 1 we will reload the data again load data to the list so yes now uh, we will go back to the users so we know a event called on start whenever the user is hatched we will get record from the we will get the record from booking details json by using this method so class name is load data i'll copy and go back here. sorry go back here now load data dot send data to the user i think it's wrong okay so now we had inherited from this uh, data class sorry data package data folder and within that uh, load data we we are using this uh, function so now we have the uh, data uh, for every user and now we can perform the post task right so i'll go back again to the task set so now i am using cell dot client dot post i am using booking endpoint and we we have supposed to provide the authorization headers and all right so for that we have to provide authorization headers i'll copy it from here We'll have the authorization headers. Next, we have to pass the data. So for that JSON, now we have uh, the data uh, within the on start. So uh, even, but we can't call this event because this is like it uh, or when the user is hatched, this event will be uh, generated. So we can't uh, uh, explicitly call this method, right? So I will add uh, one more method. I'll find uh, send uh, data. To task set class. So whenever or uh, return this data. We can uh, call this function to get the booking data for the user. Right. So I'll go back here and create booking data is equal to self dot so every user has this method right so i'll call this end data to tested and keep the uh, uh, store the data in back again to this booking data now we have the booking data now i'll add this booking data in the json and i'll store the response here and uh, to deserialize this response, I will convert this to a JSON. I'll have it the references uh, res. And uh, within that response, the we'll try to get the booking order. So it will be in the booking ID. I'll I will store it in self dot booking order. So okay, I think it's also wrong. So self dot booking. So now we have uh, the we hit the request, post the request. Uh, by using the headers and the data and this data is switched from the user class the one whenever the uh, user is hatched this user uh, get access the data uh, from the book details json using this uh, method like uh, the data is completely loaded into the list and uh, every time uh, the list uh, first record is popped out in the list and they, 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 uh, that record is sent to the user Okay, now we have done with the first task.
now we'll see how we can perform the second task so now we have the booking order now just that we are going to retrieve the booking order data it's now see self dot client dot get uh, booking we have to send that parameter right so it's dynamic name it. just that like uh, we we'll use the concatenation in the java like similarly it's in python we will use the format uh we give the self dot booking order this uh, booking order id we are going to uh use it in the get request and we'll save the response and res dot uh, uh, will print those response so these are the two tasks we are going to perform I'll just give an overview again. We had uh, three uh, different types of folders like user, tasks, and data. Within the data, uh, we have uh, the list of records. For now, I just kept two records. And we are uh, loading uh, these records to a list so that a uh, user can access every record in the list and those uh, details can be used to, uh, to post the order. And uh, after the once the order is posted, we will get the booking ID and we use that order ID and we retrieve the booking details. These are the two tasks we are going to perform. Okay. Next step is like, for example, uh, if uh, here we have only one uh, user class, right? So similarly, if there are uh, more number of user types, for because in this user, we are not uh, using any authentication purpose or not. So if uh, suppose if there are any other uh, users, um, like type maybe user type B kind of things, right? Yeah, so every time a B can execute every user file, right? So uh, in common, we will have a separate uh, file. I will name it as a uh, locust file. So we will uh, run, execute this locust file. And uh, within this locust file, we specify what are all types of users needs to be generated. So uh, it will be a single point of uh, uh, contact. Like we can uh, use those local, uh, only a single file to execute all different types of, like uh, to generate all different types of users and to uh, execute all different types of tasks. I'll create a class user my user maybe my user now i am going to inherit uh, this user class from general user okay so if suppose if there is an one more class called user b which we have created under users we will uh, add uh, those also in here and we will execute all those uh, uh, users all uh, generate all the users from the locust file itself so now i will add the tasks we have to we are ready to add the task right so we will add the task 1 here and I'm importing from the locus library. Yes, yeah, sorry, not locus library. It's from the task set, uh, task folder, and task set A class. Okay. Now we'll, there is a one more keyword called abstract. So uh, now uh, we want all the user type uh, as my user class right not from user a as because like we are inheriting uh, the general user from http user so user will generate it uh, based on the type general user but we had created another common file called a locust user so where we have all types of users so we uh, all the users should be of my user anyway this my user is going to be get created from general user class only so to avoid a uh, user getting uh, created on type of general user we are adding another keyword called abstract true so by adding this uh, when we are executing this locus file, users will be created. That users will be uh, based, uh, will be of type of my user class only. 
the reason is like if suppose if there are more number of users a uh, class we added within the user we don't want to execute sing every single file we will have a same file where we can specify all the users here and we will make the locus to generate every type of user so to avoid uh, um, uh, executing uh, each file and to generate uh, virtual users of uh, every user a user b we are adding a keyword called abstract true here so now let me try executing this locust hyphen f locust file dot file i'll make this one so it's one hyphen r one we have to specify the host address um, I'm just see if I have added a slash before here slash slash okay it's that I do I don't want to add slash here I'll click start swarming I will see okay now if we see okay something wrong in the uh, get booking order it's not executed okay I'll miss to add the task decorator. I'll stop the execution. I'll run again. I'll miss to add the toss decorator here. So the second method is not considered. Uh, why it is not considered? Add toss. So I'm just closing and reopening it again. Uh, open, reopen. Okay. Now I'll rerun. Start swarming. Yes. Okay, now we'll see uh, the every time uh, the record is getting uh, taken from uh, the JSON file and the post booking uh, is happening and it fetching the record booking order ID and it fetches the particular record also. If you see here, it's printing the uh, all the records. So if you see like only one record is always taken because we have uh, generated only one user, right? Like now maybe I'll change it to three users. I'll start swimming. Now, if you can see all the records in the uh, list, will be considered as yes, two, one, two, two, one. Yes. So now we have three records. So all the three, uh, sorry, three users, all the three users are taking uh, the data from the booking details station that is again from the list and uh, hitting uh, with the post request. And again, it's using uh, to print the uh, uh, booking order details using the get request. So uh, like now, um, see the reports as well now. So uh, we can see the number of requests and uh, median is nothing but like uh, 50 percentage of the users, right? Uh, more than 50 percentage of the requests, like uh, it, uh, it, it executed in how many seconds? So it's in milliseconds. So that is a 50 percent percentile. And this is on 90 percentile. So 90% of the request, uh, what is the uh, response time? And uh, what is the response time of the 99% uh, users? That is the one. And average is a little bit different uh, between uh, uh, median because like it considers the total uh, sum and uh, divided by like number of uh, requests. But in median, it's slightly different. It considers 50 percentage, more than 50 percent of the request, 50 percentile. It's almost median is the same. And this is like a, a response in number of uh, response length. Uh, that is, it is printing here and the current res response per second, the current request per second. And we can, the, currently, I think there is no failure. That's why it's not displayed here. If we go to charts as well, we can see the total requests per second. 
So uh, we had three uses, right? Like gradually the uh, total request per uh, second is increasing. And uh, this is the uh, 95 percentage. It's a 95 percent of the request uh, response time. And uh, this is all about a median. 50 percentile request and number of users, it's three, right? So it's actually printing the three users. We haven't uh, increased the load after that. If we want to change the load in between, we can edit and change the number of users also. This is, I have an option in the UI as well. Okay, so now I'll go back to the slides. We are seeing, okay. Now we'll, uh, there is a concept called distributed execution, right? So um, we can uh, make this, executed in a, uh, a master slave format uh, as we are uh, I am, I'm showing in the same system i i don't use the uh, ip address like a master ip, uh, IP address if we are executing uh, if you want to the scripts in a different system uh, we will mention the ip address of the uh, master system as well so i'll show you uh, we have a comment called master even if we execute this it won't get executed because it will it is waiting for the worker to get start so every uh, a user is considered as a worker so i'll go back again and initiate the worker uh, as well sorry This is a command for the worker. So if suppose if we are executing in a different system, we have to mention the master IP as well. But since I am using the same system, I am not using this uh, master IP. If I click on this worker, now you can see the number of workers is one. So here also you can see that currently one client is ready to swim. If we execute again, we'll see that the request getting started. And in the meanwhile, you can uh, create, you can uh, create another worker as well. If you execute another worker as well, you can see number of workers two. Two workers are actually running. What uh, locus collects the data from every system and generates a single report only. Um, as we are executing in the system, single uh, system, we can't uh, mention the IP address and uh, we don't see much difference in this uh, distributed execution mode. And next one is like we have uh, <clears throat> seen uh, uh, graphs in the locus report, right? But there is a similar way where we can see uh, or we can uh, uh, store the uh, request uh, response details in the uh, influx DB, uh, and we from there uh, we can uh, show the data in a visualization format in the Grafana effects. We'll move to that. Uh, before that, I'll close all this so it'll be easy to show you. Okay, we'll come back. I'll open the terminal. So I uh, here I am using Colima, uh, like it's same like uh, Docker uh, desktop. I'll initiate that. And uh, similarly, uh, let us create a common library. Uh, Python file influx DB. Sorry, DB. And events uh, dot py. Oh, sorry, I have created within this. I'll delete. 
I'll create within common library new Python file. Maybe file event dot file. So I'll copy this from existing one. I'll, I'll explain it here. I'll remove the unnecessary. So now we are creating a, a connection between the influx DB. So this influx DB, uh, it's not in our system in locally. So uh, we are going to uh, run a Docker uh, for this influx DB and store all the request response details we have here, right? So all this we are going to store it in the influx DB, and from there we are accessing, going to access the uh, Grafana. So Grafana access all the records from the influx DB and show it in the visualization format. Okay, now uh, we have to, so um, to, I, I will add, had a, a, a created a database name, uh, locust, and we have the data uh, table name as a rest table. Now, uh, if suppose if the database is already exist, I am clearing it and creating again. And uh, we had the listeners, right? So whenever a, a request is uh, uh, happening, it will listen to that request and will listen to that request status. If it is passed, it will create, a, uh, uh, it will push that record into the influx DB and store it in the influx DB. This is what happening. So uh, we have to include this listener in our file, right? So. Uh, like under where we have to initiate that influx DB, uh, right? Why before uh, all the tasks are uh, getting executed, right? So I'll uh, create a method to take on start influx DB. I'll record the events. First, first start add listener. So similarly, we're going to add the key of our arguments here. Now I'm going to all uh, rest this common library. Okay, again I had created here within this. I'll move it to a common library. I think it's there now. Okay. So we have to initiate the influx DB client, right? So we'll And the class name is influx handler events. I'll import this from common library. So before all the tests uh, tasks are getting executed, this will uh, create or initiate the influx DB client. So in influx DB client will create a database here. So after that, whenever a request is happening, it listens to that request and pass those response to the influx DB. Okay, now it's there. Uh, in meanwhile, we have to run the uh, influx DB Docker image. I'm executing in the 8086 port. It's star now. I'll get into the Docker image for that at all. Oh. This is the container ID. I'll go into that particular agent. I'll connect to InfluxDB. 
it's connected to 8086 port and I'll put a command as what are the databases it was there already so uh, the locus db it's not there now if we execute locus db will be created and all the records will be pushed to that and similarly we'll create one more window uh, this is to execute the grafana so so now grafana is also updated it will be executing in 3000 port actually so grafana is running in 3000 port uh, the login id credential is admin admin it's by default can skip for it okay now it's our job to run the script I'll mention as hyphen u1 hyphen r1. Uh, no influx common library is not a package. Okay. I think I did something wrong while creating a package. Uh, common library. I'll try recreating it. No. I don't know what. Okay, I'll create a new directory. Look. Within that, I'll create a file name, Python file name, and flux, and lush, dot file. So in interest of time, I'm copying the content from here. I'll go to locus file. I'll try it running again. I'll remove this common like by Okay, I think I have one. Focal post GD network setting on the connections. Are the already in used? Oh, mother. I think I haven't stopped that. Okay. I'll close. Okay, the existing is already running. I'll close all this and stop the execution. Okay. No one. Okay. So yeah, okay. Now we'll start executing and see is there any error? Yes, okay. Now we it's running and we'll go back again to the Locus say influx db. We'll see. Yeah, locus db is created now. We'll use this locus db. 
and within that all the records are storing in uh, rest table okay now we can see that we are hitting it uh, the host name and request name request type response length response time and status we are saving all those here and i'll uh, i'll stop the execution and i'll uh, show you how we can uh, show this how can we see visualize this uh, data in influx db to uh, in the grafana chart so i'm connecting the influx db https local host influx db is running in 8089 uh, the name of the database is locus db or i think 889 i'll check once oh the locus is in 8089 and uh, influx db is running in 8086 save and test data source okay maybe i'll give the local host name as http Uh, uh, mention it as yes, zero dot G, zero dot zero dot zero. I check whether it is connecting now. I'll take adjustment. I will see whether local host is connected. I'll go back to here. I'll remove the HTTPS connection. Yes, it is working now. I have to remove the HTTP. It is working on HTTP. So if we go back to the home page, there is a uh, option called new dashboard. We'll add a query. We'll select. This is the table name we have given in the locus this table, and we'll add the request type. Maybe we'll see the post request. How it is. Uh, in the uh, Grafana chart, I'll remove this. We'll add. We'll see the response time and response length as well. Field response length. I'll remove this. I'll remove this as well. So now, if you see the data we have in the Influx DB. We can visualize the same in the Grafana dashboard. So similarly, uh, like not only response time and response length, definitely there would be a lot of parameters we need to uh, track, right? Uh, for every day or like every month, like a quarterly, like how our the performance of our endpoint is like. So we can use these kinds of chart and uh, InflexDB is a time series database. So it will be helpful uh, to uh, store all the re requests which is happening every second and the same can be visualized in the uh, Grafana chart. I think I'll go back to the slides. I think there I that I these are the agenda I had planned for today. I it, it's question time. Anya, Anil, Sri, if you have any doubts, please feel free to ask now. Um, we had also dropped the feedback session, uh, sorry, feedback form. Please fill in that so that we can understand uh, the improvement areas or what went well, all those things. And please, yeah, uh, you can give your feedbacks here or ask questions now.
no questions from my side but uh, thank you for the session it was really helpful thanks satnya thanks ketan thank you thank you anand okay so if no questions or um, if you had faced any trouble in the beginning like i remember there were some setup issues were you able to follow those things or do you need some help in any of the things uh yes uh, in that previous week i think uh, the docker pull comments was missing uh, due to that i faced some issue uh, oh. uh but yeah and that yeah. yeah another suggestion is that if you could share this reference uh, code bases in a github post uh, like github post something that would be really good. yeah i have uh, added it in the this uh, git github repo maybe you can refer this same here sure so oh, where can we access to these google slides google slides uh, i it is in my private mode but uh, if if you want we can uh, share this as well probably yeah, we could share a pdf version yeah. sure uh, yeah we need pdf uh, yeah the github repo we will anyway share with all the participants and the recordings as well sure that helps okay so yeah if no other questions then we can wrap up the session thank you sharanya lot for the session it was you know really helpful like as a beginner i was able to understand many things um, about locus and how can we configure things and all uh, it was a really great session thank you thank you thank you everyone yes sharanya very uh, informative session thank you thank you thank you tanya please do drop your feedback as well yes please yeah. do fill in the feedback form and uh, yeah we will soon uh, share the recordings and the github repos with all participants thank you for joining today folks thank you everyone thank you thank you